Avanti is one of those maps that I always think is kind of underrated, but then I start thinking about it and realize I actually did see this quite a bit in server rotation. So, Avanti here came out on October 23rd, 2000, um, alongside the other two maps, Caspa and uh, Flag Run. And this would be the last, um, it's like, major set of maps for years. In fact, this would be the last major content update to this game for years. Uh, it would be nothing from here, so there's a bunch of... Eight maps were added to the game in 2000, alongside the new player models... And some other, like, you know, patch-related stuff, and there'd just be nothing until 2003, where you got Ravelin and the updated Dust Bowl and, you know, the teleporters. Alright, so I recommend 16 players here. I had to double-check because I'm an idiot. It's the same uh, reasoning I had with Dust Bowl. I feel it just gets a little too insane and, like, you know, too, like, you just messy with anything more than 16. Which, again, is a shame because you, you don't get the opportunity... To have one of every class on a team. Although, you're real, are we really gonna do? You don't really need a pyro, let's be completely honest. Not to shit on the pyro, but you know, let's be completely honest. So, anyway, let's get over here. We're gonna go up, obviously, because you know, that's the most interesting thing to do. And if you haven't noticed, this map has got a really nice aesthetic. This nighttime, kind of like, you know, old town look is just gorgeous for the technology. Really well done, and the texture work is. Stunning, but we'll get into the, why that might be the case. Like, it's just, it's exemplary even for this game. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. So here's a little spawn area, not much of note here. You can always build a teleporter here if you really wanted to. Uh, and, you know, there's actually two ways to go. You can either go this way, or you can go that way. Um, they're both roughly the same area, but, you know, there are, there is this bridge, like, overhang building here thing. Doohicker. So, you know, that, that has a little bit of a play, because you can't have... Like, say, like, the enemy team, like, defending team stand here and just, like, defend both exits. You gotta pick and choose. So, we'll go this way first. You got this little area here where the only real way to go besides going to the second area is to go up. And, by the way, if you don't know the rules of this map, it's it, it's just like uh, Dust Bowl where you see you take the flag and you gotta put it on the capture point. Um, it's like that, except it's one map and it's, like, you see, it's a lot smaller. There's only four... Capture points versus six. So that's where capture point one is. We'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, and if you go up here, you get this nice little building here, which if you're the... Uh, you could snipe up the attacking team or even the defending team. It could go either or. Or it could be the defending team and be sniping from there. You got options! And it leads you to this little area over here, which we'll talk about a little bit more. Which connects it to one of the later areas near control point two. This fountain area, there's going to be a lot of action here. A lot of strategic places to build stuff if you know what to do. I'm not even going to go over all of them. This is obviously a great one for a dispenser or just even to hide out. Or even snipe in here if you really want to. Obviously you go up here. This could be a really dangerous quarter if uh, defending demo men are just hobbing grenades down. Or heavy weapons guys sentries waiting for you. You got to be real careful. Anyway, at this point it's captured. You're going to move up into this area here. Which has got these slopes going down. Lots of mischief available for demo men. Soldiers, heavy weapons, guys, engineers, just everyone. You got this little area too, like I said. You want to block this one, in my opinion. So then, like, this area, this entrance essentially becomes useless. If you got a well-placed heavy weapons guy, or, like, a really skilled one, or a good sentry gun. And also, too, it still allows you, even with capture point one taken, you can still be firing down here. Uh, eventually, over time, I do believe the spawn point moves up. Um, I can't be, ex for some reason, I always forget if that's the case. Uh, we'll, we'll obviously see that in the actual map, but yeah, here is actually capture point three. Actually, no, command point two. I always fucking do that. Uh, for some reason, I always say command point two is over here, but no, this is command point two. It sounds like I haven't played this map a lot, but I have, but a lot of times I end up being defending for some reason. And, like, the, like the attacking team would never... And obviously that's what happens if you don't get the flag grab for a certain amount of time, I'll end up down there again. Awesome place to build sentries and stuff up here. Obviously got a ladder. Definitely build ASAP. So yeah, that's command point two. Grab that ASAP as well. And if you come into there, that leads you to that one place I just pointed out as well. It's kind of going over here. You can't actually get into there from here. Um, in fact, that's the thing. This is kind of a dead end area. Um, if you think this point is useless though, don't discount it. Because this is a great place to build a teleporter if you are the attacker. 
Because once you have this flag, they're not gonna like you know they're not gonna really think to go over here. So this would be a good place for teleport exit to really build put the pressure on. So yeah, let's, let's move up here. You got a couple ways to go to command point three. Uh, this is kind of like the main command, like you know. Now hostile. This is kind of like the, one of the main entrances here. Command point three is up here. Um, if you take this way, it's one way as you see, unless you know how to like you know do a rocket jump or something like that. So that's more for the attackers, and then again, it goes great with that teleporter I brought up too, because now you have a really quick way to get up here. Um, so yeah, here's the courtyard here. If you're defending, you want to, like, you know, control this spot with, like, a sniper or, like, you know, sentry just to stop him from coming that way. But it also, you know, this leads into the... This is actually a good uh, way for the attacker to try to get through. Because a lot of the attack is going to be going that way, believe it or not. I tend to see... Your sentries and your heavy weapons guy prioritize this way. So this is a good place to kind of come if you're trying to attack and like just break through. It also has this little area here that's great for, you know, attack as well. Um, or even defense, like to have a sentry like, you know, built here. And then like the um, dispenser there. Here's what the courtyard looks like for command point three. This is a really hard command point to get just because of the way it is. Um, and like if you rocket jump off of here, it's one thing. Or like, you know, it's like conk jump. But if you're playing any other class that can't do that, you gotta go all the way around. And there's gonna be like sentries, there's gonna be like heavy weapons guy just raining ass on you from here. So you gotta be really careful. You're also gonna have like, you know, snipers up here potentially. I Don't overlook this spot right here. I, I've seen so, but I have once or twice seen a sniper put here that really knows what they're doing. And they just destroy everything. I mean, you could just be Little Pip just sitting there having a good time. Up to you. Um... So let's go over to kind of where command point four is. And it's a church, obviously. That's like the, the main, the main, like, you know, defense. This is what it's all leading up to. Um, this is a spawn point right here, or part of the spawn point. You know, you start, the spawn point moves up a little bit. So once a couple c command points have been grabbed, I feel you start, like, you know, you start over there, but it slowly condenses you over if you're on red team. Don't ever discount this spot. A lot of times they're going to try to come around. Or actually, don't ever discount the- don't ever discount the other one. I- I changed my mind. If one looks really defended, like, well, like, sentries, heavy weapons, guys, make sure the other one is defended as well. Because you're gonna get blue-balled if someone comes up this way. Especially this way, because it doesn't look like it's gonna be a good idea either. Because you think, well, the spawn point's right there. Um, like, how could that be, like, easy to break through? But if you have a scout or medic, and everyone's too focused over here. You'd be surprised how easy it is to just slip through and get to here. Um, inside the church, obviously, you got this little uh, area up here, for, which is great for snipers. And this is great for command point three as well. Because, you know, obviously you can see all the way down here. Um, so, yeah, this is a really balanced map. If you can't tell, I, I think it doesn't favor either attacker or defend. And it lacks some of the, gr some of the grenade spam. I felt that was like, you know, a problem in, um, Dust Bowl. Not all of it. Not all of it. Now, before we go any farther, I'll bring up what I was alluding to earlier. This map is notable for being, um, something of a recreation of a map from an early remnant of Team Fortress 2. Um, if you don't know, Team Fortress 2 was in development for a long-ass time. After nine years in development, hopefully it'll been worth the wait, you know, um... So, it, Team Fortress 2, Brotherhood of Arms, one of the earliest, like, you know, incarnations of this game, of that game, was being developed alongside this. Uh, it, Team Fortress 2 was supposed to launch alongside Half-Life, kind of like this game would kind of launch a few months after Half-Life. Um, this was always gonna hap be, like, you know, happen as far as I'm aware, but, uh, this got pushed up to before Team Fortress 2. I might be wrong on this, I'm going by what I've read. This got pushed up just to make, like, kind of, like, you know, make up for the fact that Team Fortress 2 wasn't out yet. I think they already always intended to have Team Fortress, like, you know, Quake Team Fortress ported to Half-Life as Team Fortress Classic. Just because, you know, they, they knew that'd be a big dawn. But that's why it's not called just Team Fortress or Team Fortress 1. It's Team Fortress Classic to let people know it's a version of Quake Team Fortress. And, yeah, the, if you can't tell, the spawn points do move up because, you know, it's just... You're not seeing a lot of people spawn. So, yeah, I was right about that. Um, anyway, so there was a map in an early version in Team Fortress 2, Brotherhood Arms, called Italy that you, like, has been shown in a few early screenshots and stuff. And there's parts like this, and like the slopes over here, that you could see almost verbatim in those early screenshots, in the textures. And hell, this fucking sign right here is in an early screenshot. 
So they did basically what happened was that game got kept getting delayed. So they took the whatever like you know parts of that map, um, Italy, uh, and the textures and the art and everything. It was actually in the daytime from what I wear. They reworked it, um, and I don't know how like you know much of, like was, like of the geometry was changed at all. But they took it from TF2 and made it Avanti, the Team Fortress Classic map. And Avanti is Italian for forward, so it still has that, con like, connection that this is supposed to be an Italian town. Might explain why this map has such a unique look to it. Because clearly it was going for a more gritty, realistic look. Not unlike Epicenter, but, like, even more so. Um, yeah, that's my little history lesson. Let's just play the damn thing. I mean, uh, this map wasn't the only thing they took from the original, like, that particular incarnation in TF2 and put it in this game. Um, if you don't know, there was a, a, a different set of player models in the game, which you can still use if you want, before the player models you have now. Uh, these are the, the new ones, in quotation mark versus the old one. The old ones, um, used just the Half-Life, like, you know, player, like, you know, if you ever played Half-Life Deathmatch, they just used those animations for every single class. Um, they said in an interview, or just a little snippet, that when they made the new player models, they decided to take the animations that they'd created for the newer cla like character classes and put them in to these guys, just like a sneak pre preview. And they're all unique to every class. So that's why I, that's the reason why I always like the newer player models outside just liking how they look. It's that all the classes have unique animations. Like for jumping and like dying and stuff. And that, now you know, those came from Team Fortress 2. Anyway, maybe I should start playing. I guess we're defending first, so... Well, gotta have a heavy weapons guy. I'll show up both ways, by the way. If I, uh, can somehow... If the other blue team doesn't win and, like, um, break three and capture, like, you know... Or just win, basically, I'll show, um, what uh, attacking looks like, too. I don't know why these engineers are so forward-thinking. Jesus Christ. Like, you know, you're, like, playing some 4D chess here. 20 moves ahead. God damn. That is pretty bold of you. That is really, really bold. Engineer just- Ah! I gotta build the dispenser right here. What's the worst that can happen? Like, they're just- The engineers today are just assuming that they've already won, basically. Oh my god! What the hell is my team doing? Like, you know, I thought we were defending. The other team's defending- The attacking team is defending more like it. Goodness gracious. It's like Engineer Orama today on the other side. Yeah. Well, berries. I'm gonna, I'm gonna step up. We need an engineer, like you know, building some protection. Scout! No, no! Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off! Oh God, damn it! Ugh. I'm, I'm working with a bunch of babs. It's just babbies right now. That's I'm the only man on the team. It feels like they have like 50 engineers on the other team, but we can't be asked to have one, one engineer until I step up to the plate. Goodness. Well, if you're building a sentry in this map, it's really easy because there's there's not gonna be you're not gonna be hurting for scrap metal. Let's just say that. Ooh. I got a surprise for you. Don't actually do this in a normal match because the likelihood of someone just like you know throwing a grenade through is really high. Don't really need to build a teleporter. Wait, if you're on the defending red team or well, actually you could be blue and defending. You literally switch. It's not like in TF2 where like a lot of times I feel. No, in TF2, don't you switch team colors as well or not switch team colors? If, uh, never mind. But yeah, anyway, um, if you're, uh, playing defense, uh, don't, don't bother building a teleporter if it's up to, like, you know, control point three. There's just no, like, you know, you're gonna be right there anyway. Your resources are better, like, you know, served elsewhere. Even, like, healing armor on, like, your teammates is a better idea. Um, I don't recall this map, uh, being particularly stalemate-y. Um... You know, despite what I said earlier about how whenever I play defense, it always felt like, you know, like the other team never would get through. Um, I would say, you know, whenever we play, I'd be on like the attacking team, like we'd start out. I'd always end up being attacking whenever I joined the server, the round would start. And I always felt like my team would win and then it would just switch to defense and we would never lose ever again. It's kind of what I'm saying. It's weird. So yeah, it actually isn't, it actually is pretty like balanced as I said earlier. Oh god! Oh god! Oh my god, no! It's heavy weapons are us! Oh! What are you doing, Medic? Did you see that?
That is the most indestructible medic I have ever seen. You saw that, right? Like, there was like a nuclear bomb going off and he was still surviving that. Unreal. Yeah, I'm sw switching classes a lot, but so is uh, Fox Spot here. You know, you need to, you know, you tr I'm trying to fill in the gaps. Like, we had, like, first it was Heavy Weapons Guy, we didn't have a Heavy Weapons Guy. And then, you know, the, we did, and then there wasn't an Engineer, so then we, I put Engineer. Now there's like two of them. And then there was no Soldier, who's pretty important. And then there's no Medic. You know, you gotta, you gotta just, you gotta pick your battles, you know? It's about the team, not what you want to play. That's how I've always viewed the Team Fortress games. I mean, there was a period of time when I still played TF, like, TF2 a lot where I'd exclusively, like, just play Medic and Engineer. Which is probably for the best, because I was stupid good at Medic. But, you know, you also gotta, like, you know, kind of see what your team needs. If like, there's, like, you know, especially on a full server of 32 people, if your class isn't being represented enough, that could be a real problem. Oh man. Okay, I said earlier this wasn't that stale, matey, but yeah, like I said, uh, this is one of the hardest ones to capture right here. I would say it's actually even harder to capture than, um, number four. Which you'd think, again, would be, like, easy because it's right next to the spawn point. But no, it's just this little turn here is nuts. I mean, they might have it now, but that took them forever to get. No, I still don't think they have it. No, they're moving away. What? Why? 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 See, they bring it right up to here every time. It gets up to here, and then they just cannot figure out that they're supposed to walk up the steps in order to, like, you know, capture the damn thing. It's just goofy. It's absurd! And if you think it's because Foxbox doesn't know how to do it, I've played this map with Foxbox before. They've totally captured that point. And I've stuck. Good. Good. I just realized the engineer has a cigar. I did not know that. Well, that was a failure of a backstab, but then again, what was he doing? Was he in timeout? I just thought it was really fun and satisfying before the match just jump around to scout. Because you move so fucking fast in this game. Like, again, it really does- it's just remarkable how fast- Also, there's always weird clipping issues going on, and I don't like it. See that? That's nasty. Oh, oh, no, oh, that's- no. Oh. I don't know why no one is, um, you know, grabbing the thing. It's kind of important, you know? I'll show them how it's done! Can't handle it! Is this- are you for real? Is the flag even here? I forget if I already have it, like, you know, how long it takes for it to spawn, actually. I mean, I think it doesn't go immediately, because, you know, if it did, then you could just bum rush and it'd be over if, like, the scout or medic knew what they were doing. Fuck off. Yeah! Ha <laughs> ha! Dorko! Look at this. Look at this! Look at it! I want you to look at it! Look at it! Are you for real? You can't handle this, guys. And yes, you do spawn. Yeah, see? You well, you start spawning at the control point. I always forget that for some reason. And look at that! We did it! We did what they could not do. We have done the freaking impossible. I'm so proud of you idiots. Gimme, gimme, gimme! We gotta make this count! World record pace right here. Oh, 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 oh! Sick treats is like tricks, bro. Oh, not even a problem. 